Hi, dear all. Welcome back to the last video of the testing without form model chapter. In the previous video, we talked about individual output verification. In this video, we are going to introduce segment verification, which has passionization and the max insertion, two techniques. In the previous video, we introduced pseudo exhaustive test which does not exhaustively test the whole circuit in pseudo exhaustive test we partition the circuit and test each partition exhaustively in the previous video we talk about individual output verification and in this video we are going to introduce segment verification which partition this circuit into different segment and the test each segment exhaustively. The idea of segment verification was proposed by Makarski in 1981. For this example, we partition the circuit into A, B, C, and D, four segments, and we will test them one by one exhaustively. Now let's start with partition A. If we want to test this partition exhaustively, this partition has eight inputs. So we can apply eight test pattern to test partition A exhaustively. We have two paths to propagate the output G. We can propagate to F1 or F2. Because input Z is directly controllable, so we choose the lower path. So we observe the output of F2 and we control Z to 1 all the time. In this way, we can test segment A exhaustively. Now we move on to segment B. If we want to test segment B exhaustively, it has two input G and the Z. Actually, we do not need to add four test patterns. If we look at the first eight test pattern closely, we found that we already have two patterns, one zero one one applied. So actually, we only need to insert two more, 0, 1 and 0, 0. In this way, we can test partition B exhaustively by two more patterns. Now, we move on to test segment C, which has two inputs, U and V. We can sensitize it to output F1 because this is end gate so G must be 1 all the time actually we do not need to add four patterns if we look at our existing patterns we will find that G is 1 here so we can insert our four patterns into the existing eight patterns. When we observe output F1, then we exhaustively test segment C. And uh, the best thing is that we don't need extra patterns. Finally, we now test segment D, which has two inputs. Actually, we don't need to add four more patterns. If we look at our existing pattern closely, we would find that we already have 0, 1, and 1, 1 applied to segment D. Now we only need to add two more test patterns. Because this is an OR gate, so 
if we apply 0 0 we would have 0 and this input and uh, G is 0 and this input so we successfully test three combinations now we need one more combination so we can use this one to generate one here and we have a zero here in this way we have all the four combination for segment D and we don't need to add any extra pattern totally we need 10 test patterns to test this circuit SUSO exhaustively compare with a true exhaustive test we will need 2 to the power of 6 which is 64 patterns we see that the number of segment verification tests is much lower now it's time for you to work on a quiz given this circuit the exhaustive test will be 2 to the power of 7 which is 128 test patterns please find a minimum segment verification test for this circuit and what is the test length you can start with this hint we can test partition A exhaustively so we will require at least 16 test patterns you can start with this table and work on this quiz okay have you done yet my answer is like this starting with partition A we have 16 test patterns to sensitize this output to O2 input J must be 1 all the time in this way we can exhaustively test segment A using 16 test patterns now we move on to segment B if we want to sensitize this to O1 then F must be 1 all the time if we look at this column fortunately we have many ones available so we only need to squeeze in four patterns 0, 0, 0, 001 1, 1, 1, 1. and we do not need extra patterns to test segment B now we move on to segment C which has two input I and F if we look at these two columns F and uh, I we have 0 0 available we have 1 0 and we have 1 1 we only need to insert a new pattern which create 0 1 so we add one more pattern to exhaust V test segment C now we move on to segment D which has two inputs F and J and now we look at this column and this column we already have combination 1 1 and we have combination 0 1 and 0 0 now we can insert one more test pattern to create one zero in this way we test segment D so totally we need 18 test patterns have you got it correctly now we move on to the second technique of segment verification the pest sensitization is a good technique but it takes a very long time to figure out the test pattern is there any simpler method the answer is that we can add extra hardware such as MUX to simplify our job suppose we partition this circuit into A B 
and uh, C three segments. If we want to test segment A exhaustively, we need to observe this signal. So we insert the marks here. And uh, when we want to propagate this to the output, we need another mux. So we add two mux into this circuit. In order to control segment C directly, we will need control signal T. To, in order to control this mux, we need C1 and also C2. So we need three test signals. In this way, we can fully control and observe each segment directly. So that test generation is much easier. Now let's test segment A. If we want to test segment A, then we can apply eight exhaustive test patterns from input W, X, Y. At this time, we want to propagate this through max 1 and max 2. So C1 and the C2 must be 0 all the time. In this way, we can test segment A exhaustively. Now, let's move on to segment B. We have three inputs, U, V, and uh, T. This is an internal input. So C1 is controlled to 1 such that we can directly control the third input through T. By doing this, we can test segment B exhaustively using 8 more test patterns. Now we want to test segment C, which has two inputs. One is internal input, which can be controlled by input T, and the other one is the original primary input Z. So we can apply four test patterns to test segment C exhaustively. Control signal C1 must be 1, so we select T. And control signal C2 must be 1, so we can observe the function output F2. In this way, we can test segment C exhaustively by adding four more test patterns. Totally, we can test the circuit using 20 patterns at the cost of area overhead of MUX and additional control signals. But the test generation is easier. In conclusion, for this circuit which has six primary input, the original exhaustive test would take 64 patterns. However, if we use pseudo exhaustive tests, individual output verification, we only need 32 patterns. If we use segment verification, the path sensitization only requires 10 patterns and the max insertion only requires 20 patterns, which are much smaller than the true exhaustive test. In summary, in this video, we introduce the pseudo exhaustive test proposed by Professor McCluskey. The first technique is individual output verification. The second one is segment verification. In this video, introduce two segment verification techniques. The first one is path sensitization, which sensitizes the output by test pattern. The advantage is that there is no hardware overhead, but it's somehow difficult to find the test. The second technique is MUX insertion. We add additional MUX hardware to control or observe signals. The disadvantage is that we need hardware overhead, but it's easier to find a test. 
In summary, pseudo-exhaustive tests effectively reduce the test length and it's a good technique for building self-test. Finally, we have one FFT for you. Given this circuit, in this lecture, we generated 20 test patterns. Can you do better than 20? Can you somehow squeeze these patterns so that the test length is shorter? Please think about it. Thank you.